Welcome to Live Better Without Surgery. I'm Dr. Joe Albano, your guide to exploring the innovative world of regenerative orthopedics. Join me as we uncover non-surgical solutions to move better, feel better, and live better. Let's get started. Okay, it's February, and if you know anything about me and my practice, we do regenerative orthopedics. Like in the intro, uh, we state that. So we focus on pretty much knees, some shoulders. We do other things, of course. But we also look at whole body wellness to have your knee do better. We want to make sure that your body is doing well. So we look at bioidentical hormones. We look at weight loss. Anything we can do to, I say, it's fertilize the soil of your body so that your knee could do better. And we don't just focus on that inevitably other topics will come up like for instance women may talk about being fatigued and uh, how that relates to thyroid hormones and that does relate to knee healing so for guys one of the things that comes up is erectile dysfunction and it's an important part of the whole body approach to looking at the um, well-being of a person and guys were talking about erectile dysfunction and it's really kind of interesting, though, because February now, you know, it's Valentine's Day. So we kind of think about going on dates with our spouses. And as we get older, things don't always work as they used to all parts of our bodies. And we're talking about erectile dysfunction now. So for guys, that's things might not work so well like they did when you were 20 and 30. And it's really interesting the numbers. There's over... 30 million men in the United States that have ED or erectile dysfunction. We'll just say ED from now on. And more than 30% of the men from 40 to 70 have some form of this. And about half the men over age 40 have ED. So it's pretty common. And what causes this? Well, just in general, you can think about this like, okay, um, our bodies just don't work well as we get older as we've noticed, and especially 40 seems to be the age, 40, 50, 60, 70, and it doesn't get any better when you're 80, right? Um, so there's causes for this. It could be vascular, like the blood vessels are having problems. It could be neurologic. The nerves have problems that would go along. Well, diabetes, if uh, somebody has diabetes, that can affect the blood vessels and the nerves both. Maybe somebody had surgery. Maybe there's some hormone problems in there, some chronic disease like obesity, hypertension. If you're on chronic opioids for low back pain, that these all are known to have a negative effect on erectile function. Also, psychologically, there could be issues. Uh, it could be depression, anxiety. Uh, performance anxiety, or there's problems with uh, the couple in the relationship. All those things relate to ED. So they all have to be looked at and addressed. So we're going to kind of focus on the more vascular and a little bit the neurogenic part of this. Um, just like if you don't know what the cause is, it's probably vascular and just age related. <clears throat> so what can be done about this? Well, there's uh, platelet-rich plasma, so PRP, that's getting a bunch of platelets, which have growth factors, and you could put them into the um, corporate cavernosum and spongiosum in the penis. So basically, penis has three sponges, essentially, is what they are, and the blood flow goes into there, and that's what causes an erection. And if the blood flow can't get into there, you're not going to have uh, a firm erection. Or if you're just getting a little bit going in there, it's just not going to work as well uh, as if you had more in there. And so all these treatments are designed to help with that, help with the blood flow. And PRP has been around for a while. I mean, I learned this technique, oh boy, I can't even think, 10 years ago maybe. And um, it can work. And the way this one works is basically you're putting growth factors into the sponges and it can have a healing effect. And it's it's important because like I said, as we get over 40, things are not the same, our whole body, our knees, our shoulders, penises, they just don't work the same no matter what. And if you get some healing going on in there, 
it's going to work better. So peer P is designed to do that. And there's some studies I'm going to quote you here. So don't take my word for it. And like I said, this has been around for a while. Here's one study. This was in May of 2023 in uh, Urology Journal. Is platelet-rich plasma safe and effective in treatment of erectile dysfunction? Randomized controlled trial by Hussein Shaher, who's the main author. And basically what they did was this a, was a placebo-controlled study of 100 cases of men with mild to moderate ED. And they were put into two groups, PRP, and they got three injections. And uh, the interval between the injections was 15 days, and the other group got placebo. And they compared them and followed them out one th month, three month, and six month, uh, month. And basically what they showed is that PRP is first of all safe. So with any treatment, you gotta make sure it's safe. So it is safe and it's a promising method for improving mild to moderate erectile dysfunction. They didn't wanna treat guys who had severe erectile dysfunction. They were just focusing on mild to moderate and showed that yeah, this could actually work for that. And this is just one study. There's lots of studies out there. Some of them aren't so positive. Like with anything, you could find positions that will, or papers that will support your position of for or against. And I'm just talking about one study just for uh, time reasons here. Um, but I actually will give you two. So I'll give you another one here. So this is in the Journal of Urology. And this one is from July of 2023. Platelet-rich plasma for the treatment of erectile dysfunction, a prospective randomized double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial. First of all, what the heck does that mean? So prospective going forward, randomized, meaning the patients come in and I don't just pick, hey, Johnny, you're in this group, Billy, you're in this group. No, it's randomized um, with different, there's different ways to do that but it's not like me choosing. They just truly go randomly into different groups. Double blind, meaning me, the doctor, and the patient don't know what you got. Placebo controlled is there's a sham treatment in there. And this is a good study. So what is this one uh, about? So basically they took men again with mild to moderate erectile dysfunction and they randomized them to receive either two PRP injections uh, or placebo, and they did it a month apart. And the outcome, primary outcome, was percentage of men meeting the minimal clinically important difference at one month after the second injection. Secondary outcome was um, looking at this function score, II or IIEF, International Index of Erectile Function Standardized uh, Validated Outcome Score. And they were looking at that at one, three, and six months. And changes in the vascular parameters in the penis and any adverse events at six months. And so basically what they found is that by one month, there was a difference between the two groups and it was safe. And um, at six months with this one, uh, they were saying, yeah, they weren't finding much of a difference. So this one was an example of, uh, I didn't really see much of a difference later on in the group. So that's an example of having, you know, not a great result with this. And it's important to look at these kind of papers too, because not everything's going to have a positive result. So um, the main thing with this one though, is it's safe. So you're putting PRP blood into the sponge cavities in the penis and it's safe. So nothing bad's going to happen with that. And we've been doing PRP. Oh boy. How many years we've been doing this again to uh, these, these shots into the penis P shots or PRP shots, uh, boy, like eight, nine, 10 years, something like that now. And we've, that's exactly what I found. It's very safe and it, it can work, but how can you make this even better? So let's look at some other things here. So, what about shockwave treatment for erectile dysfunction? First of all, let's define what the heck shockwave is. This isn't shocking you. We're not taking electrodes and putting it on your penis and making you jump off the table. It's not that. It's using sound waves. So it's extracorporeal shockwave therapy. And 
flow intensity and it really doesn't hurt. <clears throat> It just, it, it doesn't hurt you. You feel something, but it's not painful. And you put it right onto the penis and, and these sponge areas around the penis. And the way these things work with the shockwave is it causes a, some micro damage to the tissue and you get healing to the blood vessels there and nerves too can be healed as well. And it's used on other body parts, like musculoskeletally, rotator cuff, tennis elbow, plantar fascia, et cetera. And it, it can work there too. And this can work on the penis as well. And we found this, if we have to pick between the two, the PRP and the shockwave, I, my experience is that the shockwave works better than the PRP. So let's look at this study here. So what uh, this one was about, it's, looking at shockwave and it was more of a review of multiple studies and there was one double blind randomized controlled trial in there and it confirmed that there is significant clinical improvement of erectile function and a significant improvement in penile hemodynamics with any without any adverse effects so safe is the first thing and they looked at the blood flow in a penis and it actually improves and that's a good thing and that is likely leading to the positive effects let's look at another one for shockwave here's one in the journal of personalized medicine effectiveness of low intensity extracorporeal shockwave therapy in erectile dysfunction an analysis of sexual function and penile hardness at erection and umbrella review and this uh the lead author was esther medrano sanchez and this one was in december or actually published in february of 2024 so very very recent so what happened here is uh, the author looked at five systemic reviews and meta-analyses so basically what that is is uh, one of these reviews and or meta-analysis looks at a bunch of studies and then combines the data in there. So it should be really pretty good for seeing the efficacy or not of a treatment. And so here they looked at five of them and they used various databases, PubMed, Scopus, Medline, Scalo, and Embase to look for this. And they divided them into two groups, a shockwave group and a control group that had simulated shockwaves. And the main variable was ED, and they used that IIEF, the International Index of Erectile Function score, and the Erectile Hardness score, EHS. So both those are very uh, standard outcome scores for this. What were the results? Well, showed an increase in the IIEF score, which is a good thing. And four to five articles showed an increase in the EHS score uh, in the shockwave group comp compared to placebo. And they showed a follow-up of six to 12 months, there was greater improvement in the ED compared to at three months. So with this meta-analysis and systematic review showed that it actually did better as time went on. So shockwave, these couple studies show that, hey, that's a pretty good thing too. <clears throat> what about Botox? So what is Botox? Botox is botulinum toxin. Wait, that's the toxin and you're going to put it into my penis? How is this a good thing? And wait, what does Botox do? Botox will relax muscles. I don't want this muscle relaxed. That's not what I want. I want the opposite. Well, Penis is not a muscle, remember it's a sponge. So what the Botox will do is it will block the release of neurotransmitters like acetylcholine, which leads to relaxation of smooth muscles. So that's where it does it. And it does it in this cavernous tissue. And then that means you can get increased blood flow and a firmer erection. So it actually can work there. You know, I was skeptical too when I first looked at that. I'm like, what are you talking about? but it can work. So let's look at some studies for this. So here's one in the Journal of Sexual Medicine in January, 2022. Long-term 
effectiveness and safety of intracavernosal botulinum toxin A as an add-on therapy to phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors or prostaglandin E1 injections for erectile dysfunction. So basically using it in addition to these other things. So with this one, what they did was this was a retrospective study. So looking backwards and it wasn't controlled. So they um, just used their patients to look at this and it was in one center and they used data from 123 consecutive patients with erectile dysfunction who didn't respond to the pills or, or the shots into the penis. And so what they did is they looked at Botox they did different dosages of it, 100 units, 250 units, or 500 units as an add-on to whatever they were doing already. And then they followed them out later. So basically, here's what happened with them. So the ED um, was improved for at least six months with any of those doses of the botulinum toxin, of the Botox. And it was safe also. So again, safe. And it did improve for six months. But they found, too, that the 100-unit dose seemed to have a better effect than the other ones. So Botox is safe. And so some of the side effects here that they reported, though, mild pain on injection and mild pain for three days following injection. Those were just with one person each out of the 100 and what was it, 23 patients. So PRP can work, shockwave can work, and Botox can work. What about if you put them all together? That's what we do because all of these things can help uh, to a certain degree. And we find that all three of them work way better than if you're just picking one of the above. So that's kind of what we do here. And for you guys out there who are over 40, who might have some uh, ED symptoms, then this uh, can give you some hope that you don't have to live like this and you don't need to take the little blue pill. You can do it without that. And in this month of February, with Valentine's Day in this month, it's something maybe you want to consider or you women out there too for your husband, be your usual kind and gentle self. We bring it up because we have egos and we don't like getting hurt, but yeah, I'm sure you'll do fine with that if you bring it up with them, but it doesn't have to live like this. If you have any questions, you can feel free to give us a call at the Albano Clinic and we can answer your questions on this. Thanks for listening to Live Better Without Surgery. I hope you found today's discussion enlightening and empowering. Keep in mind that non-surgical alternatives can lead to a healthier, happier you. Until next time, 